Hello everyone, welcome to Learning the Lyre Harp. Today I want to go over 10 string lyres with you. Now there are different setups for the 10 string lyres and I'm just going to show you a few examples of them and I'm going to go through, um, I'm going to pick one of them that is the most sold in stores uh, this, with the string setup and show you what you can do with them. And hopefully this is going to be helpful to you and answer many of the questions that I've received um, in the last little while. So let's get right to it. This first slide is showing you a pentatonic lyre with 10 strings. Now this one falls within the G major pentatonic and the reason I know that is because G A B corresponds to the do re mi of that scale and then it has the D E which is the sola of that scale because the um, pentatonic uh, scales only uses five um five notes and so it goes the do re mi sol la and that's how i figured out that this one particular um lyre is in that scale so um it what what this really helps us to do is that it doubles the range of our seven string lyre which is what i have i do not have any of the 10 string lyres so that's why i'm using pictures to show them to you this one is a a particularly good brand. Uh, you can buy this one at Etsy. I'm not going to list the, the name of the brand. You can look for it because I don't really endorse any brand. So this is made with solid wood construction, very good material and very easy to play and very lovely because like all pentatonic tuning, all of the notes go together. So it's really a nice one to have if you are interested in playing pentatonic tunes. This slide is showing you a more traditional tuning. Uh, this is a C major diatonic tuning, and it's better set up for playing melody. It's also made of wood construction, a little bit more uh, budget-friendly. You will find this particular type of lyres in places like um, Amazon, which is generally where I get mine because it's more accessible. Um, but this goes into a diatonic tuning where you could see that C is your... Um, your tonic and it goes through um, the scale notes in a more um, uh, easier method for playing and you can follow along that so it, it makes a lot of sense to me uh, because the diatonic tuning it goes from note one to note seven and then it starts again in c5 and it gives you a bonus of two other notes where you could borrow um, as, to use as a melody notes or maybe even add a little bit of harmony the third slide I'm showing you is also um, a lyre in a C major diatonic tone, but you could see there's a big difference in the way the string is set up. Your tonic, which is the C, is right smack in the middle of the lyre. It, it doesn't really follow that uh, general chronologic order where C is your first note and then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then it starts again with 1. Being in the middle, it's kind of hard to um, find the find songs for this one melodically because of the way it is set up. Now this is still in a diatonic tuning even though even though it doesn't really follow the chronological one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because the note still fits into that one um one scale key. And this I believe is better set up for playing chords and modes. And it is also uh, one that would be good for to retune into other keys. It's also wood construction. Um, it is a mass-produced product, so it, I, like I said, it's a bu budget-friendly and widely available through places like Amazon. So this is the particular one that I want to go through you because it is the most confusing one for most of our liar members. As I mentioned before, this particular lyre is in a C diatonic scale. Now, you do not need to feel stuck in that scale if you don't like the way it's set up. You can easily change the tuning of this lyre to fit another scale, such as an E minor key signature, by simply switching all of your F, so you'll have two Fs, into a sharp. Now that will put you in an E minor scale and it will make it that so that your number one note, which is your Do, becomes your E. And so you can now play anything in that scale. Now the bonus of this particular um, scale in the E minor key signature is that it also allows you now to also play anything in the G major scale because as you can see they share the same notes so all of the F's on the E minor scale 
are sharps and all of the F on the G major scale are sharp as well and there is quite a lot of songs especially in the G major scale in the Celtic um, uh, and and hymns and just even in any genre really there's a lot of songs that you can play in this two scale so by just switching just all of your f's and sharpening them you can now play into um into scales a major and a minor scale and if you don't like that one or if you want to play a different scale you could also pick another one which is your f major scale by um flatting the B flat. You only have one B here. So if you change that to a B flat, now you can play an F major scale. An F major scale or a good scale for si uh, singing, especially if you are a female. It's a good key for us to sing in. Uh, G major scale are also a good scale for singing. And again, with the F major scale, there are a lot of songs written in this key. So it can open a whole variety of uh, genres for you to play in. Another useful playing technique for this string setup, if you want to keep to the original string configuration, is to play by chord. Now let's look at the chords. I'm not going to go through as much details on the chords because I did um, a video, or actually a few videos on how to play by chord. So if you want to go more in depth on how chords are formed, please go and watch those videos for this um, remaining uh, slides. I'm just going to go through them um, fairly quickly to make sure that we keep this video concise. If you want, you can actually follow along with me if you have the same uh, liar or if you have maybe a 16 string liar, you can follow along still with me because it will still be useful for you and just start um, with the notes, the E4 um, in that liar that you have. So let's get right to it. The tonic chord or the number one chord in a C major scale is the C chord which is played using C, E, G. Now you can play this by plucking it all together for a block chord or playing it one at a time in an arpeggi arpeggiated way. We could also invert the order of this chord so that it now reads G, C, E. It's exactly the same chord using the same notes we've just changed the difference um, the order so it is now an inversion with G being at the bottom rather than it being at the top. And from that inversion of the C major chord we can quickly move to an A minor chord which is the sixth chord in the in this in the C scale. As you can see all we're doing is keeping the uh, common notes C and E and we are moving from G to an A and that's a really easy way of moving and going to a new chord in that progression just moving one note depicted by the gray moving to an A now we have the chord A C E for A minor chord triad and from A minor chord triad it's easy for us to go to the F chord triad which is A C F again keeping the two common notes A C in that in that um, in those two chords and just moving one note which is E to an F. This gives us an F chord triad in, in, in an inversion A C F. And from the F chord it makes it easy to move to a D minor chord which is A D F and as you can see we are still keeping to that pattern of keeping the common notes and only moving one note at a time. We move the C depicted by the gray over to D and now we have A, D, F for D minor chord triad. Now let's go back to the C chord in the um, second inversion G, C, E. From the inverted C, it's also easy to move to a G chord by moving two notes down. So we're keeping the G, that's the common note of the two chord, and moving the B and the D down a string over. Now we have a G chord a triad G B D. From the G chord, it's easy for us to get to the E minor chord a triad again by moving just one note up from D to E. Now we have notes G B E, which is our E minor chord a triad. And from the E minor chord a triad, it's easy to go back 
to the G chord by playing G, B, D, moving that E down to D. And finally, we can go back to C from the G chord by moving those two common notes in those two chords. We are playing F, C, and E back to our major chord triad. This slide shows you the uh, connectivity and flow that we just went through in those previous slides, just uh, as a one slide that you could either print screen for yourself and use um, as, a, as a reference. And again, this is this chord inversions and sequences are not limited to ten string lyres. You could use this with uh, any of your lyres that have um, the capability and having enough strings to do all of these chords. Now, why learn to play by chords? It's because it allows you to play so many beautiful songs, um, to, to sing along as a company um, for yourself singing or other singers or other instruments. And there's a lot, lot of um, um, lead sheets out there um, that are done for either ukulele or guitar that you could also l uh, use for playing the lyres and play by chords. There's unlimited potential for you to play songs without really knowing a lot of um, uh, music theory and just playing the chords and just using the sequences that I showed you. It will be easy for you to move from one chord to another, so I hope that you will give it a try one day. Now let's look at modes. Now, a bit of a disclaimer, I'm only going to do a brief overview of modes. Modes is a big topic and there's lots to learn about it and it does deserve um, a whole uh, video of itself. If you are interested on uh, learning about modes, let me know and I'll put together a more detailed um, information and tutorial on it. But for now, this is just really a brief overview so that you could see how you could apply this to your um, lyre in the 10 string and that configuration that we are looking at right now. So what is a mode? A mode, simply put, is when we move the tonic to a different note in that same scale. So um, let me explain that to you. Here is a major scale in the C major scale and you could see that your tonic starts with C uh, that's your Do, and then it goes Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, and it goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, which is the natural um, progression of the C major scale. If we are playing in the, in the mode, um, we are taking that Do, that, that first tonic note, and moving it to a different note in that same scale. So because we are doing um, the examples here that I'm showing you in this slide, these are the modes in the C major scale. So as you can see, even though that we are moving the Do or the tonic of that uh, that scale in, in the modes, we are still keeping true to the, the C major scale, there are not going to be any sharps or any flats in the C major scale, so there are not going to be any C, um, any flats or sharps in any of its modes. So Ionian mode is the tonic, it starts with C, the Dorian mode, you will see it starts with D, and the Phrygian starts with E, It's and then the Lydian starts with F, Mixolydian starts with G, Aeolian starts with A and the Locrian starts with um, B and it just and the progression just goes from there. So your Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Di, Do takes on a whole um, a whole sound shift because we are moving all of the um, the notes and um, starting from the tonic scale and in that um, progression. Now some of the notes um, that can be freely played in this tuning without having to tune anything would be the Phrygian mode where it starts with E and the Lydian mode which starts with F and the Mixolydian mode which starts with, with G. Now I'm going to take you back and to remember the first few slides that we saw at, um, towards the beginning of, of this lesson is that the notes that we can actually, sorry, the scales that we can actually retune this lyre to if we wanted to is to retune them into the E minor scale, the G major scale, and the F major scale. So you can see the correlation in here, except because we are not changing the scale, we are using a mode because we are not adapting to those scales by either adding the flats 
or the sharps. So we're not retuning. We are just starting at a different note. And that is really what a mode is. Now, why do you play modes? Um, each mode carries a certain character. It allows us to create a much more variety of in music. And it gives us um, a lot of ways to express thoughts and feelings because really modes um, on themselves have, um, have a different feeling and that it evokes. So it allows us to actually pick appropriate music for our lyre and make them fit. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you have found this useful. If you do like the video and if you want me to create more videos on different topics, please leave them in the comment below. Let me know what you think of this video. Please like and subscribe and as always, happy playing!